Hi everyone. As you might have noticed, my channel has by far not only one video about recent aviation developments. However, today I decided to review an earlier model. I guess an innovator in the field of aviation technology and playing a legend of American military equipment. I'm referring to the world's first variable sweep wing fighter, the F-111 Aardvark. And now I'm about to tell you about its challenging fate, incredible capabilities, and glorious victories. Military news in touch. Let's go. Fundamentally new model was discussed to be created as far back as the post-war years, with the ambitious development requirements advanced. American designers wanted an aircraft with the carrying capacity of a bomber, the speed of a fighter, and the flight range of a transport vehicle. At the same time, the future Iron Bird had to be piloted in a good way, an easy way, and well equipped. Well, it's a good thing the idea of vertical takeoff and landing was abandoned at the very beginning. Difficulties arose when the engineers got to the speed characteristics and wing design. So, supersonic flight required fighters with small swept wings, while low speeds, ships with small swept wing and large elongation, Ultimately, it was decided to create the first-of-its-kind design with variable geometry and flight. However, the installation of innovative technology has immensely affected the cost. This caused two-thirds of the potential buyers of Aardvark refusing to purchase such an expensive and complex design. It's worth mentioning that the works on the creation of the F-111 required tremendous efforts. For all the time, the project took 25 million man-hours and 31,000 hours of the aircraft wind tunnel blowdown. Needless to say about the jaw-dropping back then bomber price, the development of the combat vehicle took almost $2 billion, and the price for one prototype as far back as the 1970s reached $18.3 million. This is the reason why only 563 aircraft out of the planned 1,500 machines rolled off the production line. But despite all the challenges, in 1967, General Dynamics released the F-111 series designed for the U.S. Air Force. Later in 1973, another Australian version appeared called the F-111C. By the way, the name is worth mentioning separately. For the strikingly long snout, similar to the nose of an African animal, the aircraft was nicknamed Aardvark. The Australian version was called even funnier, Pig. <laughs> Now, let's take a closer look at the design of our hero. It's made according to the high-wing plan of aluminum alloys, with the steel, titanium, and other metals added. The length of the aircraft is 22.5 meters, and the wingspan in expanded form is 19.5. That same famous swept wing is made in the form of honeycomb structures that increased its aeroelastic characteristics. Wing sweep smoothly varies from 16 to 72.5 degrees. The wing also has double-slotted flaps, slats, spoilers, which at low speeds could work as ailerons. The two-seat ejection cockpit housed new sensors and instruments. It has the following devices installed. Airborne Avionics Analog Aiming Navigation System MK1 with ALQ-20A inertial subsystem. Radar APQ-113 with an ASQ-23 optical sight for navigation and fire control and a collimated display. But one of the main advantages of the F-111 can be called the APQ-110 radar terrain following. It allows to accurately reach the target, i.e. even blindly, first pass attack the enemy with conventional non-adjustable ammunition. More than 98% of all bomber sorties took place at low altitude, namely in the mode of the terrain following. Two TF-30P3 afterburning turbofans were placed in the rear fuselage, the motors provided Aardvark with a speed of Mach 2.5, i.e. 2,655 kilometers an hour, a flight altitude of 18,000 meters, and a combat radius of 2,140 kilometers. The aircraft combat load is about 15 tons of various ammunition placed on two internal and eight external stations. M117A1 bombs or GBU-58 cluster bombs with forced release can be installed here. Also, MK-82 shells weighing 900 kilograms and MK-83 weighing 1,350 kilograms or the paveway complex with an improved semi-active laser homing head. To destroy large objects such as ships, bridges, hangars, GBU-15 bombs are used. 
and for self-defense, the classic AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles are attached. Nose compartment can be equipped with nuclear weapons, for example, B-43, B-57, and B-61 shells. Surely the aircraft could not do without a gun, for which time-tested M61 Volcano with 6,000 rounds per minute is installed here. Just five months after entering mass production, the F-111 was sent to Vietnam where its first battles took place. There, the American bomber was able to counter the Soviet S-75 high-altitude air defense systems known for their capabilities. In total, over 4,000 sorties were performed during the fighting operations in Vietnam, and six of the 52 aircraft involved were lost. The aardvark was seen in Thailand, Libya, and in the Persian Gulf. It showed excellent results, traveled long distances without refueling, and turned out to be quite tenacious. However, the advanced sensation was not perfect enough. The complex mechanisms made the design too heavy. To fly the aircraft, the pilot had to undergo additional training, and the cost of operating the aircraft had grown every year. But the repeated modernization of the project contributed to its long service life. Just think that it tallies roughly 10 versions, including such machines as the RF-111A Reconnaissance Aircraft 1967, or the EF-111A Electronic Reconnaissance Aircraft 1975. The airship was sent to an honorary pension as far back as 1998. It serviced for 54 years until it was replaced by the F-15E Strike Eagle, performing medium-range precision missions, while the Lancer B-1B took over the supersonic bomber role. RAAF, Royal Australian Air Force, kept on operating this aircraft until December 2010. As for the design itself, with variable sweep, in the years following, America created two more similar aircraft. The F-14 Tomcat carrier-based fighter interceptor was the second one, and the B-1 Lancer heavy bomber was third. By the way, similar machines started to be made not only in the United States. A little later, the Soviet Union introduced the Su-24 bomber to the world, followed by a number of other designs, the best of which was the Tu-160. But as for me, none of the subsequent aircraft could replicate the success of the F-111. Even today, it still has many loyal fans. In general, Aardvark was a pioneer in several new directions at once, including not only the type of wing, but also afterburning turbofan engines and automated terrain following radar. Today's hero had a significant impact on subsequent samples of a similar design, and some of its technologies later began to be applied everywhere. If you liked the video, please click the like button. Subscribe to my channel as the new review is coming. See you soon.